A group loyal to Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the Southwest agenda for Asiwaju Swaga, has officially launched in Lagos State. He's rumored to be interested in succeeding President Muhammad Buhari in 2023. However, he's yet to make any public pronouncement. The group has also stated that the national leader of the All Progressive Congress, Bola Tinubu, already has 12 million votes in the bag ahead of 2023 presidential elections. Now, joining us to discuss this is Kafilat Ogwara. She is the secretary for Swaga. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Good evening. Great. Um, so the leader of the APC has not come out to say that he's running for office, but then campaigns are launching. I'm trying to understand if the man has not said or indicated interest for, to run, why are there campaigns on his behalf? Well, uh, nobody has started any campaign because by law, nobody has the right to do that. Oh. The Southwest Agenda is a voluntary organization. It's, um, you know, a non-governmental one and is an initiative by some of us who feel that um, the way we are now, the earlier we start, the better for us to start, to start consultation with Nigerians. And this is why since last year we started moving around the southwest zone. Because we found out that some northerners are saying that it's unconstitutional for anyone to say that there should be power shifts or power rotation. But we all know that power shifts and power rotation is, is already like a culture, a norm, and a tradition. It's like a political policy already in the country. That once the northerners are there for eight years, automatically it should come back to the South. And this is why the Southwest Agenda was initiated. And uh, we came about it by, you know, getting a lot of us from the Southwest zone from different states in the Southwest to sit down together and then visualize how we can ensure that the right peg is in the right hole this time around in 2023. Our issues have been that for too long, of which we have, you know, elected different leaders with the intention and the vision and the, you know, the, the, the view and the, you know, the thought that this time around, this person will get it right. This time around, as politicians, or this time around, we want Nigerians in their own thinking, in their own thoughts, in their own wisdom to pick a leader that will fix Nigeria for once. And this is why the Southwest Agenda is rooting for, you know, a digitalized Nigerian a man with defined vision and mission who has the capacity, the character, the charisma, and even the courage for new ideas and strategies. This is somebody that we know that he has unparalleled love for the poor and the underprivileged. We okay. also know that if he is to publicize the effort and the support that he gives to the less privileged, I'm sure Ashura Jibola and Netunubu will be on there every day. So we believe so much in him because of his consistency as a progressive, you know, and also a loyal opposition. Because it is the loyalty that he has being in, being in the opposition that has helped to salvage the multi-party electoral democracy in Nigeria today. Okay, let me come in. If you recall, you'll find out that, okay. Let me come in there because you raised a lot of issues. You said the issues that we've been facing in this country... Uh, I'm changing the words, are insurmountable and it has to, things have to change. So, um, yeah, hold, on, hold on, I, I'm, I'm going somewhere. Just hold on, hold on. I'm going somewhere. Yeah, I know. Just hold on. I'm going somewhere. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm going somewhere. So, the person that you're, that Swaga is being put together in honor of is a member of the same party that came to us yes. in 2015 yes. and told us yes. that they saw where we were as a country and promised us that they were going to bring us change. Nigerians came out yes. en masse, many Nigerians, voted for the APC, and the mess that Nigerians are in today, including you and I, is as a result of this same party that you're trying to push for your leader to run as presidency on their ticket. Why should the average Nigerian trust your party? Again, if the truth that you, you sold us much. or That's the idea you sold to us has not paid off and we just have about two years to go, why should anyone listen to what you have to say? Well, uh, the present government being led by President Muhammad Buhari 
I'm sure you have seen, you know, they have done a lot. Really? Can, do can you tell us what they've done? Because government will always do only what they can do, as far as they can go. And this is what President Mohamed Buhari led government has done so far so good. We are not saying it is the best that Nigeria can have. And this is why we are saying that. Some, some people have argued that President Mohamed Buhari with security challenges, banditry, and all these you know, issues that Nigeria has today is a moral burden already for Ashwa Jibola Metunubu because he's one of the champions, you know, who can vast for President Muhammad Buhari to become the president. And if you also remember, you found out that President Muhammad Buhari has been trying, trying, trying to be president. That's why the fact that some people have said that he has total thousand number of votes, but those votes have never been transformed into elective uh, office. He has not won any election with those votes until Ashwajibola and Metunubu supported that cause. And this goes to say that Ashwajibola and Metunubu knows how to fix things. He knows how to put the right things in the right hole. Don't forget that we use uh, it was the So does this mean that he can pick anybody, anybody he randomly be, supports, he whether the person is good for Nigeria or not, Bari. can and I become president? Is that I what you're insinuating? That. Is that what you're saying? Hello? So you're saying, you're I suggesting that. that if Bola Ahmed Tinubu were to pick, for example, somebody, anybody, and support that person to be president, he will be president, whether the person can deliver or not, right? I hear that. I'll ask it again. You're saying that because of the support of the leader of your party, the president emerged. Yes. Now, yes. so you're telling us as Nigerians that whoever your party leader decides to support, whoever he throws his weight behind, can become president, can win the votes of Nigerians, whether the person can deliver or not, right? No, no, that's not the point. What I'm saying is that if you look at the personality of Ashwag Bola you find out that when he was in government in Lagos State as the governor of Lagos State in 2019, uh, in 1999 to 2007, you will also be a witness to the transformational change in Lagos State and the vision that he has always had then to date that has distinguished Lagos State from other states. And the way he has built a lot of Nigerians, a lot of personalities today in this country, nobody has such credentials like Ashwad Bola and Metinubu. A lot of personalities in different capacities that have served this country in different capacities. They have done so very, very, including the vice president of this country. So we are saying that for a man like that, who has the vision to position people in the right places, he will definitely be a good president and will also have a good you know, number of people around him to work with him that can deliver Nigeria from where we are today. Now, there are so many people in the South, by the way. The South is not just made up of the Southwest. There's so many people in the South who are also throwing their hats into the ring. Let's not forget, the Southeast seems to be the one getting the short end of the stick, um, who've never really been able to uh, produce a president. And not that's not because they can't. It's just because the opportunity has not been given to them. Um, we've had a president, former president, Lucia Gwon Basinger, from the Southwest. We've had a, a, a former president, Goodluck Jonathan, from the South-South. And then we, of course, went back to the north, where we have President Buhari. Why shouldn't the southeast get a shot at it? Well, uh, once the presidency is gone to the south by the party, of which we already we already taken that for granted, that definitely we have to come to the south. Any zone in the south, 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 southwest, or southeast, has the right to contest for it. But we are clamoring and we are canvassing. They have the right to also clamor and canvass and lobby other party leaders to ensure that it goes to their zone. But the Southwest Agenda 2023 is saying that we have the best candidates in the whole of the South that yeah. can be that, you know, catalyst for the real total revamp that Nigeria needs to do. Because if you know who Ashwad Bola Ahmed Shinobu is, you will know that is exactly what Nigeria needs to do because we need passionately committed people that know the strategic, strategic fundamentals to build and implement public policy for the common good of all. And we believe that Ashwajibola Adetunobu is that man that can take us to where we really want to go to.
Finally, the... as much as I, as a person, I'm an advocate of generational shift. Okay. I believe that, you know, most of the time, I believe that the younger ones should be able to encourage, we should be able to encourage the younger ones, we should encourage uh, young people to come more politically. Okay. I have had hundreds of young people call me to tell me that they want to join this chain because I tried to go to the as much their life one way or the other. Okay. So, Let, finally, because we're yes. almost out of time. You want to say something? Yes, the vice president, as you know, has gotten a nod from the presidency to, um, you know, uh, throw his hat into the ring in terms of vying for the same office that the leader of your party is eyeing. Will he be able to go toe to toe with the president, uh, the vice president, I beg your pardon, knowing that he's the number two officer in the land and also in the party? Who told you he has got the nod of the president? Well, it's in the news. Do you read the papers? I wouldn't know where you heard that from. I just told you. But uh, I believe that uh, Professor Yemi Oshibajo and Ashwag uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu are still very, very cordial political associates. And uh, I think it's just the media that is trying to create what does not exist amongst them. We believe that Ashwag Bola Ahmed Tinubu is one of the great fighters for the democracy that we enjoy today. He was persecuted, he was arrested, he was detained, he was harassed, and even had to go on political exile. What more can you ask of the sexual? So we believe that he's the one, he's even the one that nominated uh, Professor Shiva to be the vice president of this country. Interesting. Then I'm sure he had the opportunity to be the vice president, but he sacrificed and he, you know, nominated that. Okay. This person can do it for us, and that was how it came to be. So this is public knowledge. This is what we know as well before. He sacrifices for the good of all. And all that right. is exactly what he's doing for Nigeria. All right. Kafilat Ogbara is the secretary of SWAGA, and we want to thank you very much for being part of the conversation. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you for staying with us. Up next, Nigerians will tell us if process should be allowed to take place as the one-year anniversary of NSERS draws near. And when we return, I will give you my take. I think we should because um, there's, a freedom of, there's a freedom of speech. You don't keep people quiet. Fine, I know things happened and people were silenced and they weren't allowed to talk, they weren't allowed to do, say what's on their mind. But we can't allow the government to always have their way, you know. They've tried to shut us up as youth, not to allow us to talk and fine. But we as a youth, we have a voice and that's why we have the media. We can still go on media together and do this thing, keep doing what we know how to do. I wonder, God will hear us. Considering the fact that the people who are fighting are actually very gullible and, you know, cunning in their own ways, I think protests is not really what we need right now. I think what we, what we, what we need to do as youth now is to, you know, sensitize as much people as we can as regards 2023 election. That is the only change we can truly make in this country. How we elect our leaders and, you know, how we put the right people in the right positions. You know, that is what we should be thinking of how we can strategize and you know plan towards 2023 that should be our focus as as, as youth of this nation we we are the leader of tomorrow when are we going to achieve that aim we've been saying all this for how many years now and all those cabals all those baba they refuse to leave to leave the post so that which we can try our own possible best and see how i'm going to do it and the so wasted during the the first answers you know is very very alarming and the blood is crying for revenge. And we can't wait and be looking at this, the way things is going because everybody's fed up. To be inside me, I'm, I'm just tired. Even though I'm a Christian, you know, because of Christ, Jesus Christ, you know, the Christianity is really coming us now as a Christian. You understand? And I think we should remember all those people that have laid down their life for us, the youth and the blood. We have to honor them. We have to do under answers until they're listening to our agitation. We had one last year, right? We had one last year and even up until now, I don't think there's been any positive result yet as of now. So what I feel is, even if we're going to have another protest, it should be unified. You know, it should be unified. And as citizens, we have, we have, um, we have, we have the right to protest. We have the right to protest. And, but one thing I'm not certain about is 
what's going to happen after the protests, especially here in Nigeria, what's going to happen after the protests. So that is what I feel. I feel it should be unified. But if not, I don't think it's necessary. Here's my take. Now, I'm not here to sermonize about how bad our leaders are or how terrible their response has been to the rule of law. Instead, I want to address Nigerians, so give me your ears. We must not stop at complaining and murmuring in private, you know, because we seem a bit too lukewarm about issues these days that seem to be strangling us to our deaths daily. Instead of screaming at the top of your lungs, we're supposed to be making sure that these people hear us, but we're resigning to fate daily and committing things to God and saying, you know, let's hope for a miracle. <laughs> God is not going to come down and help us. No, the truth is, God is even facing other things. There are children that are dying in Somalia. There are things that are happening, earthquakes in different parts of the world. God is interested in those things. He cannot come down and save Nigerians. So if Nigerians don't make moves and take action that will bring these wayward politicians or high-handed leaders to book, Nothing is going to happen. We can't keep waiting for the United Kingdom or the US or even the United Nations to come to our help. Do they come to us and ask for help when they're dealing with their own issues in their countries? No. Nigeria will not change if Nigerians do not change it. We have to realize that the office of the citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is the most powerful office in the land. And a handful of leaders cannot rob you of those rights and your powers. Know your rights. I am Mary Anakum thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening.